Good evening. Today we're going to review the double bevel sliding compound miter saw from Harbor Freight Chicago Electric. Retails for about $134 on sale right now. When I bought this two years ago, it was $160 with shipping because I didn't have a store near me. So probably paid way too much for it. I could go today and get the same thing for $139. Two years of service was worth it to me. It's a huge saw. It takes a huge table to put it in place and to have enough room to slide the mechanism back and forth. When I'm building stuff out of wood, I use the table saw the most, and this saw comes in second to the table saw. So it gets a lot of use. It's a 12 inch blade with a one inch arbor. I was gonna clean this up before I did the review. I decided to leave it raw just like I use it in my shop. So I quite literally, didn't do anything to it, but to move it over here on top of this saw. Now they advertised that this was picked as best in class by Handyman Magazine. I don't know about that. For $160, it was well worth it to me. Does everything I need to do. Has a few quirks, but uh, we'll go over those. So you have to have enough room to slide it all the way back to cut and slide all the way forward to position your wood. This is a, a hold down for the piece you're working on. And you adjust it and it goes up and down. It has another has another thumb wheel. You can actually take it off, put it on the other side, although on the other side it really just gets in the way. So put it in place, lock down the spindle, put the position this where you wanted, tighten that. Half the time I don't use this, although I do recommend that you do. It has a very nasty kickback. When you bring it down and you go through a piece of wood, right as you get to the end of it, it tends to want to kick back a little bit this way and up. The first compound miter is you loosen this and there's a lift, there's a spring loaded clamp here and you just slide it to where you want it. Predefined spaces, 22 and a half, 31.6, 30, and 45. So, pretty standard for a miter saw. Let's bring it back to zero. Out of the box, one of the things I don't like about it, it has a very wide throat right here, about a half an inch. And if you're cutting small pieces, they will fall down in there. And that's one of the reasons I want the zero clearance uh, plywood across the front. When I first got this, I was adjusting this piece trying to pull it back and forth, and it broke. So, I consider that a major problem. I managed to do without it. It doesn't provide that much support, but it is something that I would want, but unfortunately I don't have, because I broke it. I don't fault the saw for that completely. It's only attached here and here on the ends. That made it weak. I didn't really pull that hard on it to adjust it and it broke. At some point I'll probably get some JB Weld and, and try to get, put that back on, but for right now I'll do without it. It has a stop right here and the stop has a hole in it, so by default when you pull it down, the bolt on top will go through the stop and let it go all the way down. But you can pull that to the side, the adjustable bolt will hit that stop so you don't have to go all the way down. So it is possible, I've never done it, but it's possible that you could cut uh, a rabbit or a dado slot using this saw. Let me show some details of this def stop. By default, you would leave it in and this would go all the way down and it would cut the wood all the way through. But if you put it off to the side, it would now hit that stop and it wouldn't go all the way through. It's possible you could use a saw to cut dados. It's a little bit imprecise because you would have to make a cut, move the wood, make a cut, move the wood, make a cut. I also found out in my testing that you'd have to have a block behind this because due to the curvature of the blade, if it's all the way back, it won't cut all the way through. So it's, it's possible. I'd much rather do it on a table saw. 
trying to show all the options with the saw. So there's the default setting all the way down. And it has a nice adjustment. The screw can be adjusted. And then there is a lock to actually hold it in place. So I actually do like this. This is a thumb wheel. Keep it from sliding. That's more for storage and shipment than anything else. It has a bag for dust and this is almost full. And there it all comes out the front. Uh, I'm not real impressed with that. Uh, typically shavings get everywhere. If I put my own fence here, I'll probably build a dust collection into it somehow. It's made for a right-handed person, but as you can see, there's a safety on both sides, so a left-hand person <laughs> could theoretically use it, but it's still set up for a right-handed person. Okay, it has the handle in the back here. You loosen that, and the saw will go up and down. And it is, there are adjustments right here and right here. Make sure it always goes back to zero. Normally I have it screwed down to the bench so it doesn't move and there are four holes, two on each side. Here's a close up of the stop block for your, your second compound miter. This is the laser guide. So you wanna clean that off once in a while and it has some adjustments. You can loosen these screws and move that if it needs to be adjusted. Here's a shot of how the handle works put your hand in there and you pull that now it won't pull unless you pull this safety so the safety is with your thumb and then you can pull the switch <laughs> it is set up for right hand and left hand although to me the left hand is a little awkward the side of the motor mount gets in the way for a left-handed person putting the wood over here so it's not perfect, but it is usable. Okay, this is the arm lock. I honestly cannot remember there ever being a handle on this from the time I bought it. You push it down, pull it out, and it has a cross tab that either sets on this stop or goes down in that hole. That locks, now you pull it out. Now it swings up and down. Another thing I wanted to show is this cable. This is the lock for sliding back and forth. So, slides back and forth. If you get this in a bad position, it's not going to want to go, or if you pull it too tight. I can't make a bind up now, but in using it, you can bind this, and there's a natural place that that cable will come to rest seems to be it right there. It's very important that the cable be attached here, but it can get misadjusted. And there's a natural place, just let it go back to that. And if it gets misadjusted, put it back to that, and then you won't have any problems. To be honest with you, a zip tie across that's probably gonna work better. Okay, if you wanna adjust these top pieces, you pull this release, it leads back and forth, and then you put it back in place. Now, I think you're way better off to build a wooden fence for this. Uh, but if you just want to use these, they are available. I was adjusting the other one and I, I thought I had that released and I didn't, so I jerked it and it actually broke it on each end. From this angle, I can show a little bit better about how this goes in. It has a flat piece. That flat piece needs to go back here so the thumb wheel can go into that. That's pretty steady. Then this can go up and down back and forth you want to use that whenever possible to hold down the wood because this thing will cause a pretty nasty kickback of the whole arm and throw the wood uh, if it isn't held down pretty good you see that i use a power strip with my saw it's somewhat of a short cable and since it's a big saw i usually keep this power strip with it so when i move it around i've got more cord available this is the support on the end so you can pull it out and lock it with this little screw. Obviously it does not work right, but you, you're supposed to be able to do that. For some reason it doesn't go in enough to lock that. that. That might be a problem for you. But again, if you build your own custom zero clearance fence, 
you're probably not going to need these anyway or adjust them once because they'll be under the wood. And the other part of this is these two thumb wheels are adjustable so you can get this to the right level. You're probably going to adjust this once and never bother it again, but it does have the option. I mostly use this for short cutoffs, so I don't even worry about adjusting those. So I hope you're getting the impression of just how big this saw is. Um, probably takes like a four by four table at a minimum. So here's the angle adjustment guide. You loosen this to allow this to move. Here's the lever, and you just move that to the next setting. There's 15, 21, 30. It has a 31.5, but there's no groove for it. And there's 45. It's odd to me they have the 31.6 marked, but there's no groove for it. So you keep coming. 15, zero, and it keeps going. So there's 15 again. 22.5, 30, and there's 31.6 again, but no for it. But you can tighten it up, set it where you want it, and tighten it up, and it'll stay. So not having the groove isn't the most major problem in the world. And that does lock pretty tight. So you keep going, there's 45. So it'll go 45 degrees either way. Of course, most of the time I keep it on zero. I mostly use it for cross cut. Although when I get into doing a lot of angles, that'll actually come in handy. You can put the hole down on the right side if you're left-handed, but you can't get real close because it starts getting in the way of the motor. So, I'm not sure that they could ever fix that, but it's still a pain in the ass that it's you can do that, but it doesn't work right. Okay, I wanna show the other adjustment that gives it the double bevel. So you loosen this big ass set screw back here and the saw will move. It will go 45 degrees this way by default. But by default, it comes so that it's always zero right there. But you can remove this stop block. It is removable and it will come this way 45. Obviously, they think you're gonna use it mostly on that 45, but it is possible to set it for the other. I personally wouldn't do that to me I find a way to use it the other way. And you just tighten this big set screw and you're back at zero. And it was set to zero from the factory. And when I actually checked the saw blade angle compared to these uh, stops, it was at zero. So that was pretty good. The laser was a little off from the factory and I had to adjust it. So you will have to do some adjustments to the saw. This is a close up of the four mounting holes that they give you to tie it down to the bench. I recommend that even though it's it's pretty stable and it doesn't want to uh, tip either way, it's still better to do that. Less vibration is always better. So I've got it set for zero. I'm going to put a piece of wood in there. Put the hold down on. Even having the hold down on this side still limits your range of motion because you can only go so far before you start getting in the way of the arm. But you've got a lot more clearance on this side. You don't always use the hold down. Okay, so I wanna unlock the arm so that it swings up and down. Go ahead and cut just a piece off the end of that. This is more a reflection of the blade than anything else. It's a pretty smooth cut. I've got uh, an 80 tooth blade in there, brand new 80 tooth blade. You can see that, that the saw dust tends to get up in there. I've cut something with some pitch in it because that's a, a goo 
sawdust with goo. I've had the saw about two years and I've never cleaned it, so pretty gnarly looking. But it still works just as good as the day it was uh, purchased. So let's do a 45 and see how that works. Now this is where this is going to get in the way quite a bit. If I loosen the lock and I try to move that, it's quite obviously going to get in the way. So I'm going to move that to 45. Tighten it down again. Good 45. Let me get my speed to it. No, I didn't cut the best looking board in the world. I just found a piece of scrap pine. But that looks pretty good. It might be a hair off. Okay, I didn't show I showed this earlier, but not in very much detail. This is the spindle lock. So, first off, anytime you're working with the blade, unplug it. Um, verify that it won't start. So what you want to do is push that and then rotate the blade. There, that slid in. Now I can take the arbor off and everything will work good. Okay, when I move, it's probably the only time that I set that spindle lock. When I move it, see if I can get a better angle on how that works. So this is the lock on the arm. If you want to lock it down, you pull that out and let go and it slides back in that hole. And that's what stops the arm. And then when you pull it out and put it in its cradle, the saw will come back up. Probably the only time I do that is when I'm moving the saw. Uh, do that, lock this nut. And that makes it a lot easier to move. I lock the back lock. It won't slide back and forth. <clears throat> it won't go up and down very much anyway. Now I can grab it by the top and carry it. It is not the easiest saw in the world to move. It's heavy, it's big and awkward, but it is, you know, it's luggable. You can take it to the job site very easily. I have a dedicated bench that I put it on so it never moves. Changing the saw blade is just a bitch. First off, we're going to unplug it. It also came with spare um, bushings for the motor and you replace them here and here. I don't anticipate that a casual woodworker like me would ever wear out the bushings, but I do have a spare set. I recommend that you use the hold down. It has a vicious kickback. And reaching for that is exactly why I leave the blade guard on. I never want to put myself in a position to come in contact with that. And as long as it's like that, you'd have to really try to get into the blade up in here. So it has a huge range of cut. Realistically, realistically, how wide of a piece of wood could you cut? So if I put the blade all the way down in that slot, I could probably come out. That's probably a good distance there. I could cut, I could cut this whole thing. Nice uh, Harbor Freight tape measure. That's nine and a half, so you might be able to go 10. Of course, you could always cut once and flip it around and cut the other if you had something wider than 10. So this is a temporary zero clearance. I typically just go straight down when I'm using this. It's 
because I don't want to cut all the way through it. Okay, so good and bad things about the saw. I think it's a very accurate saw. It, it cuts a reproducible cut. So if you set up the saw to cut a certain way, it will cut. It doesn't have a fence on the back to clamp stops to. So it's kind of awkward to, to cut something. It's why I have the board that I put in. That way I can clamp to the back of it. But I want to do 12 inch plywood here, you know, three inch plywood here. And then I have a zero clearance fence and I have something to clamp all up and down that three inch back plate. Safety feature, it has left-handed operations. I'm not left-handed, so this was very awkward to me. A left-handed person might do better with it, but I still have a feeling that it's just, you know, you're still crossing your hand over the saw. It would be the equivalent of a right-hand person reaching on this side of the saw to move it. Because when you're standing here, this is more natural than this. Although maybe you shouldn't stand in front of the saw anyway. So it has a lockdown, has a nice carry handle. It's not balanced very well for that. Balanced very well for that. It's tail heavy because of the motor. Maybe you could get used to adjusting it. These, while those look like they're a good idea, they're flimsy, they're hard to set up. Uh, they, they won't stay in place very good, so like I said, I very rarely use them. It will allow you to turn this and lock this so it won't move, even if you do the release. So if I do the release, it still doesn't move. But if I loosen it and do the release, then it will move. I kind of like that. I like the scale on this. And I like the fact that they have a 22.5 and a 31.6, 45 and 15 already marked with pre slip with uh, grooves for the lock plate to go. Dust collection, it has dust collection here, which works to some extent, but when I use this saw, saw just, just goes everywhere. Uh, with a directed dust collection right here, I think that would work a lot better, but I think that. They produce this and that's something the person that gets it needs to do. Typically a woodworker will do his own dust collection set up do their own zero clearance fence with a backer plate. So I'm not gonna fault them for not having that, although they could have a little bit better here. So overall, I'm very happy with the saw. I use it all the time. I do a lot of small projects and I, you know, when I do the small projects, I mostly cut it on this saw for uh, cross cuts. Ripping I still do on the table saw, obviously you can't do that on this. Okay, so bottom line, would I recommend you buy the saw? Yes. When you get it, you need to spend a couple hours, you know, adjusting this, adjusting the stops, adjusting the laser so it's correct, mounting it down. You don't have to have a zero clearance fence here. It would be nice to have. With an 80 tooth blade, I don't notice the blowout in the back near as much as I did with the 32 tooth. I do recommend it. Take the time to set it up. Remember that just about everything, just about everything Harbor Freight sells is made for a hobby worker, not a professional worker. If you take this saw on the job site and you use it day after day, I honestly believe it's gonna fail a lot faster than, a, than another name brand saw would. If you're a hobby woodworker, you use it on the weekends, it's gonna hold up probably do you the rest of your life. I see it a lot for $134. I think I might even have saw it for $124 recently. When Harbor Freight first comes out with something, they price it higher, and the longer that it's out, the more they cut the price. They kind of front end load getting back their investment. So when a new tool first comes out, you better have to wait until they've had it a, a few months at least. Highly recommend you get this. If you like the videos, Please hit like on the videos. Please subscribe to my channel. That is the ultimate measure of success on YouTube is the number of subscribers. So I would appreciate you subscribing. And thanks for watching.